I once called 2022 the craziest year in wrestling history and I never imagined that the sequel was going to be just as, if not even more crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 is basically over and when you take a look back at what has went down this year in the world of professional wrestling, it almost doesn't seem real. From returns we never expected, to moments that we will never forget, to all the legendary shows, to the WWE actually being sold, this was a year made for the history books. But with the year being in the rear view, all eyes are now on 2024, and if the past two years in the business are any indication, 2024 is going to be wild. This is going to be a huge year in the world of professional wrestling, and the first thing that comes to my mind is Kevin Dunn is finally gone from the WWE. Kevin Dunn has been the executive producer for the company for over three decades. He is the man responsible for how the company has looked, has been presented for over 30 years, for better or for worse, and a lot of people are happy that he is gone. Because even though once upon a time he was very good at his job, for the past 10 years or so, he has deadass made the WWE product nauseating to watch. From the camera cuts to the shaky cam, the LED lights everywhere, everything we have disliked about the presentation for the past 10 years or so has been a large part due to him, and now that he's gone, there is a real possibility that the product begins to look and feel very, very different. But yeah, this is huge news because for our entire lives, the product that we have watched has been directed and presented by Kevin Dunn, but starting in 2024, that is no longer the case. After 30 long years, he is gone from the company. And honestly, good riddance. And as 2024 begins, so does the road to WrestleMania. This is easily shaping up to be one of the most hyped builds to a WrestleMania in a long, long time. CM Punk, as we know, is back in the company, and even though he returned back in November, his run is beginning in 2024. He has officially been confirmed for the Rumble, and the return that seemed impossible is about to get fully underway. And that alone is huge. CM Punk is back, and 2024 is going to be his redemption tour. But everyone in the back of their mind is thinking, how is he going to behave? How is he going to act? How is this run going to end up? In a year from now, is he still going to be on the roster? Because as we learned in the past few years, when it comes to pro wrestling and especially CM Punk, who the f*** knows what's going to happen? But for now, all signs are pointing to a date with Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. The WWE couldn't ask, couldn't have been gifted for a better potential night one main event than this. This feud, as everyone has said, is going to feed families. Two men for all we know don't really like each other, two conflicting personalities, shit is going to blow up and the world is going to be watching, and on the other side, we got Cody vs Roman 2. These are the two main events everyone wants to see, these are the two main events that are most likely to go down, but the question is, how are we going to get there? The point is, I don't think there's any wrestling fan out there who isn't excited for this year's Wrestlemania, I mean after all, it is Wrestlemania 40. Are they going to let Punk just walk back into the company after all that shit he talked and let him be champion? Is Seth going to walk out champion? And then there's Roman Reigns, will WrestleMania 40 be it? Will it finally be the night where the legendary reign comes to an end? Is this it? Or is 2024 going to be another year of Roman? It all depends on Mania 40. If Roman walks out champion at Mania again, it's a wrap, it is over. He's easily holding that damn title for another year. And honestly, at that point, just, just let him retire. Let him be champion for the rest of eternity because he is never losing. His match at Mania is easily going to be the biggest and the most important match of the year because if he doesn't lose at Mania, yo, real, realistically, he's never losing. And yo, if he doesn't lose, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just complain online. But if his match is against Cody, as we all expect, it's simple. Is Cody going to finish the story or is his story cooked? Is it dead on arrival? Because if he loses again, there, there is no coming back for Cody Rhodes. As big as Mania was last year, you take all this into account, all the other matches we can potentially see and all the other stories, this year is going to be even bigger, no doubt about it. But yo, Mania isn't the only thing I'm looking forward to in the upcoming year when it comes to the WWE. In 2023, one of the best things the company did was go international. Not just house shows, not just weekly shows, not just Saudi Arabia. They truly went international and truly expanded. Backlash in Puerto Rico was a movie, Money in the Bank in London was legendary, even Montreal finally getting a pay-per-view after 14 long years was special. The hunger that all those fans had, all those years of wanting a pay-per-view, all that pent-up hype and excitement just made those events unforgettable, and this year they're doing it again and they're doing it even bigger. Starting in February, we are getting Elimination Chamber in Australia, in May we are getting Backlash in France, and in August we are getting Bash in Berlin in Germany. Those crowds are gonna be mental, those fans are gonna be like wrestling ultras and are gonna turn those pay-per-views into Champions League games real quick, and I'm so excited to see what those moments these events bring. Re in Australia is gonna be awesome, Gunter returning to where his career started in Germany, that is gonna be special, and whatever else they can cook up. The WWE has been absolutely killing it with the international shows, they make their product 
like 10 times better and this year it's easily going to be the best one yet kazuchika okada is one of the greatest japanese wrestlers of all time and this man is still only 36 years old and is about to become a free agent and you already know what that means of course of course there are rumors that the wwe is in play for him and it's like no way right no way the wwe signs okada and once upon a time i would have been like yo hell no it's never happening but now after the past two years who knows anything is anything is possible at this point will he most likely end up in AEW? probably but if he were to come to the wwe and they treated him properly they gave him some respect and they made him a main eventer you know mix in their production and how big they can make some wrestlers feel mix in his career charisma and his aura, it, it could be generational. As much as I love AEW, he will feel like 10 times a star if they do him right in the WWE. But yeah, we've heard a lot about stars like Andrade and Ricky Starks, you know, wrestlers who are frustrated over AEW who want to make the switch. But what's more interesting to me is who in the WWE wants to make the switch. I never thought I would see the day where Edge was going to be in AEW, never. But so at this point, all bets are off. It could be anybody. Is our boy Drew McIntyre going to make the jump? I don't know, will Sheamus leave? I know it seems unlikely, but we've seen crazier things. Things change weekly. One week you're a lifer and the next week you're on dynamite and the same thing goes for AEW. Everyone thought 2024 was going to be the year that MJF would come over to the WWE. With AEW making MJF the face of their promotion, that thinking is dead. It's all but guaranteed that MJF has re-signed with the company. So it's like if it's not MJF, who will make the switch? All this craziness in the wrestling business has spawned from that competition and it's about to get even crazier, especially with how AEW has been doing of late and how big 2024 is going to be for them. I think it's fair to say that 2024 is going to be the biggest year in AEW short history. While I wouldn't say this is a make or break year, yo, it's damn close to it. In my opinion, AEW had a great 8 months in 2023, but since September, this product has cooled off heavily. The viewership isn't down that much, but attendance is slipping. It's becoming harder and harder to of those weekly shows luckily for pay-per-views the fans are still showing out but it's just been a messy few months for the company as a whole for the past four months People are iffy on the storylines, the booking decisions, all the announcements we get that don't really lead to anything. People are iffy about the roster being bloated. They rarely get to see some of their favorite wrestlers. People are iffy about Ric Flair being brought in. AEW just feels weird these days. You will watch a Dynamite and it will be the best episode you've ever seen, mixed in with the worst episode at the same time. The company just feels weird and lost right now. And it doesn't help when one of your biggest stars and supposed locker room leaders is getting allegations like this. It doesn't help that the company he sucks at PR and seems to take the most serious issues so unseriously. This company for the past few months can't help but just make themselves look bad and they need to step up in 2024. They need to get the momentum back. They need to get the magic back. And the thing is, they obviously easily can. They got the talent. They got the money. They got the fans. The ball is in their court. But they got to become more serious as a company in general. They have to step up not just product wise, but also talent relation wise, PR wise. They have to start acting like a serious company. No more Twitter rants no more wigs and costumes while discussing serious allegations you gotta step up the reason 2024 is big is as you guys have probably heard this is going to be the final year of their contract with warner discovery which expires december 31st 2024 and for the next year they better put out the best damn product they can to ensure the deal gets renewed and they better be the best damn company they better be on their best behavior so that a network like warner actually wants to keep them on their channel so they can represent the company yo they need to stay on tnt and TBS because if AEW has to go out and try to find a new network in this day and age in this climate where wrestling isn't the most attractive television property it could get ugly. NBC already has their deal with the WWE. Fox is leaving the wrestling game. There's not many networks left so might as well make the most of where you're at because there is a real possibility that the WWE could end up having Raw on either TNT or TBS pushing AEW off the network and while that might seem surreal and not likely where there is smoke there is fire and not to mention that back in 2000 this is exactly what happened with the WWE and ECW. That is probably the most interesting story going into the year. Where is AEW going to be in 2020? because all of that gets decided in 2024 and where is raw going for a while this feud between the companies was kind of petty just you know competition over wrestlers and talent but it's about to get very very real because now they're hundreds of millions of dollars on the line 
The fun and games are over, and we must not forget that 2024 is going to be the first full year of WWE under Endeavor control. What changes is that going to bring? How their product changed? The philosophy? We're so used to the WWE doing things in a certain way, but now that's all the window. Things can easily be changed now because there's new bosses in town, and I'm not talking about Triple H. Kevin Dunn being gone is already a huge bomb. That will change how the company looks and feels, and who knows what's next. I'm telling you man, 2024 is going to be wild. In the ring, out of the ring, we thought 23 was crazy, 24 is shaping up to be even crazier. I mean, we have The Rock telling kids that he might actually wrestle again. Now either The Rock is working a dying kid, or he might actually come back. Who knows? Anything is possible at this point. That's what 2022 and 2023 has taught us. But yo, of course, we will be seated and it's an amazing time to be a wrestling fan. What a special time to be a wrestling fan. So I'm excited and I can't wait. This is going to be fun. Buckle up, fellas. It's time to complete the trilogy. It's time for another crazy ass year in the world of professional wrestling.